So I'm at the pet store with my kid and I see this amazing piece of spidey wood. Yes, I said spidey wood. For some reason, I cannot say spider wood. Anyway, I had to have it. I just had to have this piece of wood. And then I thought, heck, I'll make an aqua state baking video for my viewers. Anyway. So placing the piece of wood was really easy because there's really only one way it could go in. The rock here I'm placing is called Lace Rock and it's really amazing because it will raise your pH a little bit. I wouldn't overdo it. Don't put too much in because it will raise your pH. I, however, have very soft water that comes out of my tap. I have zero KH when I test my tap water. So for me, it benefits me to add a little bit of this rock to my aquarium. Forgive me here because I can't tell you exactly what these plants are that I'm planting in the back. Of course, they're stem plants, but I am unsure exactly what species. They're not converted, and the pet store that I buy from frequently doesn't actually know what they're selling me. They literally sell things as bunch sales for like four bucks. So you get a plant for an awesome price because normally online you would find them for seven bucks or so. I get them for four dollars, although I may not know exactly what they are when I buy them. So I'll have to wait to see how they are once converted. If I had to have a guess, I would say hydrophilias and maybe a rotella. Eh, it's hard to tell. Now we've jumped forward a little bit. So the reason why I chose stem plants for the background was because they're not real heavy root feeders. So if I want to change it up or move them around, it's not as big of a deal compared to if I like plant some swords or bow or any of those ones that really get rooted. It won't make such a mess to move them. So I took a few struggling plants from my 55. And a couple of those struggling plants are sword plants. I have no idea how big they'll get. They were poorly shaded where they were in my 55 and I decided to move them. So we'll see what happens putting them in my seven gallon. At this point I decided that I didn't really like where I placed the second sword plant. So I moved this stem and I put that sword plant in another spot. I was like, eh, I'll try it over here. But once you like find a spot, like you've decided, yes, this is your spot. Definitely don't move them from then because you want them to establish roots and really grow. If you keep moving them, you're going to dwarf them. So here's a plant I've never tried before. It's called Rotella bonsai and it is absolutely beautiful and gorgeous in Google pictures when you search for it. It's supposed to be an intermediate plant that requires medium to high lighting and benefits from CO2. Since I'm doing a do-it-yourself uh, jelly method weird CO2 system experiment, I'm hoping that I can get this thing growing and flourishing for me. I do plan on switching back to a low tech setup at some point, so we'll see what happens. Now we're going to go warp speed. More parva. I planted some weapons around the hardscape. This right here is dwarf baby tears. I guess this plant requires CO2 in order to carp it. It's a harder to keep plant, but you can keep it in a low test setup. Is that true? I don't know. This is what I'm reading. So this is my first time with dwarf baby tears. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that I can get it to spread with the do it yourself CO2 method I'm using. And then if I can carp it with it, maybe I can just keep it alive in a lower tech setup by just dosing the water column regularly. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And maybe I'll make a video about all this once it's all completed. I can't wait for the wood to darken. It's going to be so pretty. And there you have it. This is my new seven gallon aquascape. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
hit me up in the comments if you have any questions and I just appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thank you. Have an excellent day and take care.